Welcome back to Deep Dive with Dr. Cat. Today we're going to be building a simple linear regression model. We're going to be doing this with Excel spreadsheets and then we're going to do this by hand. So today what we've got here is a screen with our Excel spreadsheets and then we've got some sample data And we're, what we're going to do is try and calculate using a couple of key formulas to find the simple regression model. So here on the screen, we've got a few different equations. Right now, you don't know what each of them are, so that's going to be a little bit of con confusion, but we're just going to go review them one by one. Uh, not all of them, but, but most of these. So what we what what our objective is, is building the simple linear regression model. And that is the second equation here on the page on the screen. Y hat equals B of zero plus B of one times X. B of one is slope on this formula right here, number four, and then B of zero is the intercept. So we're going to solve for the slope first and then we're going to solve for the intercept next and then once we have both of those we can then get the simple linear regression model. Once we have the model we can then project forward get a forecasted demand value based on this linear regression model. Just in case you don't remember or don't know the simple linear regression model is able to give you an indication between uh, not just indication, but it tells you about the relationship between X and Y. Going back to your linear algebra days, you might have learned about scatter plots, being able to plot coordinates in space, in a two-dimensional space, where X is the left and right axis, axis and the Y axis is for the uh, top and bottom, sort of top-down uh, direction. So you've got a two dimensional coordinate space and the independent variable in this relationship is the X and the dependent variable is the Y. So the uh, simple linear regression model allows you to predict what the Y value might be based on X. How are we going to figure out what that correct value is for that prediction? Well, we've got to have a linear regression model based on a sample of a sample, a small sample size of um, stuff we've already observed in the past. And with that, we'll just assume that we're given a set of numbers. So going back to our spreadsheet, we've got a few sample numbers here on the screen. The problem is that we have we have this sample problem where somebody in a musical instrument sales distribution world has decided that there is a connection, um, a, I, dare I say, causal relationship, uh, cause and effect between two different sets of numbers. One is a set of numbers relating to YouTube views and this person has decided that the correct numbers to jot down is for every time there's 30,000 YouTube views that the ukulele sales would be eight. 40,000 views, 11. 70,000 views, 12 sales, 60,000, 10, et cetera, and so forth. So based on this sample, little sample of data, how can we come up with a simple linear regression model? So we're going to do this using Excel and then uh, we'll follow along uh, right after that with doing this by hand as well. All right, so I've put the columns X and Y down and what we want to calculate first is the average for 
x, and we want to calculate the average for y. So we have x, which is the YouTube views, and then we have y, which is the or, yeah, so that's the y. So this right now that I've highlighted is the x, and the sum is 33,000, no, 330,000, sorry. And we've got count of six. So the average is going to be 55,000, and let's actually write that down here. So we can use the average function in Excel. We'll just select every single number in that series that we're interested in. And what I'm going to do is click and drag this bottom here that would copy and paste. So same thing here, we want to find the average and this would be the average um, y value, right? So sum is 69 divided by 6 equals 11.5. Now we're interested in calculating for the slope, which once again, just to remind you, b of 1 has two parts to it. We have the numerator and we have a denominator. The numerator is the sum of all the differences between the average number for each of the different axes, you know, that difference, add it all up, and then the denominator is the x values, the difference between the average x and the sample x squared, sum of, sum of all the squared values of those differences. So let's, let's calculate that. What would make it really easy to do here, uh, let's just maybe uh, annotate what we're about to jot down in here. In here, what we want to have is this difference, the x for this sample minus the average x, and we're gonna use function f4 to make it a constant value, we're going to multiply by y minus the average y. And also, let's make that a constant so that when we click and drag this, or copy and paste, rather, we are going to get all those values copied. So here, instead of average, I'm interested in the sum. Because remember, the sigma symbol is the sum. So I want the sum of all these values, which is going to be equal to... 175,000. If you were to click and drag and view at the very bottom of the screen, you will also see that it will give you the sum of those values. Now, the next thing we want to calculate is the denominator. So the denominator is going to be the squared value of x minus average x. So we'll just uh, write it like that. And then now we can take x minus, oh sorry, we actually have an x value, minus the average value, and we want to square that, and we're going to, not square it, but we want to get the difference, then we can square it, and we want the sum here as well. This is representing a much larger value than the one before. So now we have the numerator, and then we have the denominator. So let's make that a really nice little label. That way we know what's happening. So now we have these values, and then we could have slope equals numerator um, uh, well you know I'm not going to write it out actually I'm just going to do this I'll put this right side and I'm going to move this over here divided by that so numerator over denominator this is now the slope that's the value of the slope what we have next in our equations just to bring that page up again we have b of 1, which is slope, and now we have b of 0 that we can calculate because we have b of 1. So going back here, intercept equals, and here the formula is 
y, average y, minus the multiplication of the slope with the average of x. So let's, let's calculate that using the formula, average of y. Uh, I just noticed maybe this needs to have a decimal. There we go. We, we don't want a whole number. We want the, the correct fraction there. Anyway, one more time. So average of y minus the multiplication of the slope with the average x value, which is going to come out to 6. Now that we have this, we can create here um, equation number 2. y hat is equal to b of 0 plus b of 1 multiplied by unknown x value. And the common thing that we call it is y hat, sometimes with the dash, sometimes without. So I'll just write it without. So we have b of 0, which is intercept, excuse me, intercept, plus slope multiplied by x, which is going to be equal 6 plus 0 0.0001 0, 0, x. Now, given this, we can then predict what possible values are with different YouTube view counts. So now let's let's predict that. So we have here um, let's let's scroll down the page. So predicted values forecasted. go. So let's say we want to guess what the value is of 40,000. What we're going to do is plug this 40,000 into this regression model. So we have 6 plus 0 0.123 zeros 1 multiplied by this value. All right. So we're going to get 10. What if we have 10,000? What if we have 15,000? What if we have 20,000 or 35,000? And here I had an extra zero, so we remove one for 15,000. Just to make it a little bit easier to read, we can add a little bit of a comma right there, and we don't really need the zeros after the decimal because we are not working with that level of detail for these views. Um, and also views is a whole number, so that is why. Okay, so let's copy this formula down the page and we'll see that if we have 10,000 views, we'll have seven sales, 15,000, seven and a half, which is nonsensical. It may be closer to the floor as opposed to the ceiling for that figure. In any case, this is the forecast value. We give you an indication of between seven and eight, seven or eight, I guess, because you can't sell half of an instrument. Anyway, so this is the y hat value. And I think what I'm just going to do is write y hat so that we have it as something to reference. All right, so now what we're able to do is look at the fit of this model to the sample data. So some of the formulas that we are interested in are uh, SST, SSE, SSR for numbers six, seven, and eight on the page. And these are important because then we would be able to calculate for for 10 for r squared. r squared is the coefficient of determination, and it's a very fancy name to say it is the measure of how well your model fits your sample data. This is a number that can fall between 0 and 1, and 1 is the perfect number if every single sample dot fell on the 
uh, regression line, if there is absolutely no error at all, then it would be r squared equals one, all right? SSE would be zero because there is no difference between the sample data and the projected data, and also r squared would be one. So let's try calculating with this example. Let's see if the projected values, I'm sorry, predicted values, let's see if the predicted values match with these predicted values. Let's see if they match with the original y values. What I wanna do is copy over that, oh, sorry. Uh, what I want to do now is use this exact table, but the y hat value is instead of, whoops, I made a mistake there. Let's copy it. What we wanna do is find the pr predicted value based on the YouTube views. So we have here is going to be this value, A3. Yes. All right, so this is now the label that I wanna give here. And in order to calculate for this uh, equation number seven, we're gonna subtract the y from y hat. Or, or no, sorry, I said that wrong. I'm gonna subtract y hat from y to find the difference between those two numbers. So this is gonna give us the SSE sum of squares due to error. Now we've got, or actually I should say this is y minus y hat squared. And then the SSE figure is gonna be right here. Okay, so this is gonna be the sum of the values in there. So how do we get this? We want y minus y hat, and we want to get it squared for the squared value. Then we could add the sum of that together, and this is not adding up correctly. What I want here is not that, but the sum. There we go, that looks more correct. We want the sum of that column to get the SSE value. Now we have SSE. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to show that on the screen. So the Y minus Y hat value is going to be each individual Y value subtracted, subtracting the predicted value using the regression model because this is using the regression model. Okay, we do this for every single um, row here, and then in the end, we can sum up that uh, series of numbers. The next formula that we can calculate is probably, um, if we have SSE, we can either calculate SSR or SST. We can go ahead with SST because with SSE and SSE, uh, we can actually use this formula, one minus SC over SST. So let's calculate that real quick now. We have SST is equal to Y minus Y average, or average Y, it, as we would write here. But we also wanna square that value. All right, so I'm just gonna do that. Right now it's zero, we haven't added anything up just yet. And we're going to begin uh, here we go, let's just center it so that it looks real nice. Okay, we have y minus average y, and we're gonna use a constant for that so that we don't have to keep clicking and all that stuff, the wonderful 
uh, beauty here is that we can very easily get the constant value to subtract with the same average value. Anyway, so this is now the two numbers that we've come up with, all right? And the R squared value can be uh, one minus SSE over SST, which is going to be equal to one minus this value divided by this value. All right, so that's where we get 0 0.59. So it's above half, so I guess it's better than terrible, but it's not perfect, absolutely not perfect. It's not necessarily that strong. I mean, it's close to 60, but not quite there. Anyway, so this is a figure that we came up with for R squared, and then we can use the square root of that to get the correlation uh, co coefficient. Um, another thing you can calculate is the estimate of variance. You can also calculate the standard deviation once you have the standard, um, uh, the estimate of variance. Um, instead of doing that, let's now maybe turn over to the handwritten you know if you didn't have excel with you you can still calculate this so let's go ahead and try it out so what i've got here now is a note notepad, digital notepad. And I'm also going to um, take a moment. So I'm going to pause and come back with having written out all the sample uh, sample variables. Okay, so here are the sample numbers or the, the numbers provided by the problem. And what we want to solve first is slope because Oh, uh, whoops, there we go. So we want to calculate the slope and this formula is going to, to be the sum of x minus average x multiplied by y minus y average over Oh, my bad, not over n, over the sum of x minus, uh, x minus average x and that squared. So let's get that written a little bit tidier. All right, once we have the slope, we can calculate Oh, my bad. We want B of one right here. That would be the correct one. And then we have B of zero here. Which is equal to the intercept. Which is then equal to B of, oh, sorry, no, average Y minus B of one multiplied by average of X. Okay, so now let's, let's calculate the slope. Um, I just realized I probably made it a terrible, I probably made a terrible mistake right here. I should write this out over here. That way I can continue using the right side of these two columns to continue with showing my work. All right, so what I'm gonna do with calculating the slope is I'm gonna separate out the numerator and the denominator portion. So I'm gonna calculate first each individual row of y subtracting, oh, sorry, um, 
two parts here for the numerator. We have the difference between each individual x with the average x value, and then we have each individual y uh, being subtracted by the individual or average y value. So 30,000 minus 55,000 is going to be negative 25,000, but I'm just going to write it here for now so that you can see what the values are. Um, and I totally forgot to calculate for the average x and y value. So the x average is going to be 30 plus 40k, 30k plus 40k plus 70k plus 60k plus 80k plus 50k over, we have six elements, which is going to be equal to Three thirty thousand over six, and what I'm going to do now is uh, continue with the y average. That way, I can then use my calculator to calculate all of that um, because I can't do this in my head at the moment while talking out loud. What I can also do is turn on my calculator view on the side here. There we go. Um, let me clear the memory and start from scratch. All right, so we've got 330,000 divided by six equals 55,000. We have eight plus 11, 12, 10 and 13 which equals to 11.5 so that's how I got those figures right there uh, what I'm going to do actually is just highlight this all right so you get to see where the values come from and then when I write it out, um, perhaps if I do this, So just give me a moment and I'll write this all out. Oops, I've got a typo. I should say 11.5. So now we can calculate this and it would be equal to 30,000 minus 55,000 
equals negative 25k multiplied by negative huh? negative 3.5 so I'm just going to continue to write this out uh, what I can do because we have all the thousands being written by the k is 44 minus 55 or 40 minus 55 which is negative 15 I have another typo here, so let me correct that really quick. There, now that should be looking correct. So let's do all the math here. So starting from the first, 25,000 times 3.5 is equal to 87,500. Immediately I can see that we can cancel out two of these because we got negative and the positive, right? So we can cancel those out and then continue forward here. 25,000 times 3.5 is 87,500 and then finally 5,000 times 1.5 is 7,500 and we have one negative, so ne minus 7,500, which also coincidentally, we can cross out the other set. So we're really left with 75, 87,500 as the numbers to go with. So we have 87,500 times itself, so times two, which brings us to uh, right here, the top. Divided by, and then we're now going to solve the um, So this is the numerator, and now we want to solve for the denominator. So that would look like this, x minus average x squared. So instead of trying to write out 30,000 minus 55,000, we already got its negative, 50, negative 25,000, so we could write that squared. Now the cool thing about these calculators is that you can calculate the sum of squares 
pretty easily. So let's let's go through with that. So we have 25,000 and all we have to do is times equal to get the squared version and we can add that to our memory. Uh, this calculator also has a grand total so I could probably get away with the grand total number but I'm just going to try with memory for those who don't have grand total as you can follow along with me for this. So anyway I've calculated 25,000 squared is this figure. Now I have 15,000 squared. Add that to memory. I'm going to add it to memory again because we have on the third line the same number. 5,000 squared. Add that to memory. 25,000 squared. Also add that to memory. And finally ending with 5,000 squared to memory. So what we have now is this number 175 and then a bunch of zeros. All right, so that would be the denominator here. So remember how this is in memory? So what I could do is clear, memory is still going to be that, right? So I could use that to my advantage. I have 175,000 as the numerator divided by the memory uh, calculation. And I'm left with that number as the answer. So that's the slope. All right, so now we could use B1, which is 0 0.0001. One, we could use that in the intercept, excuse me, we can use that in the intercept formula. So we have the average of y, which is 11 point, five, and we are going to not add, we're going to subtract b of 1, which is 55,000, with the average x, sorry, I was wrong. I took the average of x value and I kind of flipped it for a moment, so I actually want to do that. And that's going to actually come out to 11.5 minus 5.5, which is going to come out to 6. So let's do that with the calculator really quickly. So we have 5, uh, 5, 55,000 times 0 0.0001 is equal to 5.5. Anyway, so that's how we get the slope and the intercept. And now if we want to write out the y hat formula, Remember, it looks like the second equation there. So y hat is equal to b of 0 plus b of 1 x. And here we can replace the two values. So b of 0 is 6 plus 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0001 x. So that is our regression formula. Or regression model. Every x value in the future, if we say find there is clearly 60,000 views, then we can predict how many sales can come out of that figure. Let's turn back to the spreadsheet because now we could try to plot it. And I think this would be interesting. We could see if we uh, get the same number. So what we are going to get here is the values that we were given originally. Okay, so we're gonna use one of the features that come with Excel. We're gonna insert a scatter plot chart Okay, and then we're going to select the one with the uh, linear regression model.
All right, so that number here, right here, 0 0.0001 times x, that is the same as what we got here. It is also the same as what we got over here for the r squared value. So that kind of confirms that even if we didn't go through all the different steps, you now know how to get those values if you were to plot uh, dots on, on, a, on a chart. All right, so that was building a simple linear regression model. Linear regression models are not only limited to simple regression, you can also look at multiple x values and that would look a lot more like a bunch of different x values. So um, actually, let me go back to my notepad. That would probably be a better way to look at it. All right, so let me scroll down here. OK, so for multiple regression, and this is just to give you a note and not necessarily how to solve it. But for a, re uh, for a multiple regression model, it is not simple because then you have more than one x value. And here each of the x values are called features, you know, depending on which world of uh, like are you statistics or machine learning or whatnot, each of these x values are features. So for instance, if you're looking at house prices and you're trying to predict this the uh, price of a house, you're going to look at number of rooms, you're going to look at zip code, you're going to look at condition of the house, you're going to be looking at all these different factors, and you're going to have multiple different x values. So for instance, your y hat value may look a lot more like b of 0 plus b of 1 x plus b of 2 x and b of 3x. Why? Because we have 1, 2, and 3 uh, features here to calculate this value. So that's kind of how the difference between the multiple regression that is a little bit more useful if you're doing forecasting of more complicated stuff. Uh, and I would just say that most folks who end up in that world of more complicated regression modeling, they will then select a tool, whether it's Excel with plugins, or um, maybe they'll code their machine learning model uh, using regression. So uh, with that said, you know, that's, that's it for this video. Um, I've shown you how to build a simple linear regression model using both Excel and with by hand. Thank you for watching. And if you like this, please like and subscribe and I will